We have memories of our past, things that we've made mistakes in relationships, in our jobs, with our children, with men, women, marriages, all these things. We've made mistakes. And we look back in our life and we say, I wish I could do it over again. But if you had to do it over, would you change? You say yes, but you don't know because, see, you're going back to a new beginning. New beginning. So if you go back, there's nothing to learn from it other than you made a mistake, now correct the mistakes. Do something about what you could not do or didn't do. And God wants us in this year 2012, I believe, personally, myself, is He wants us to get serious about His return. Amen. He wants us to get in a place that He can speak to you and you recognize His voice and don't let the devil deceive you in any way, dragging you in a direction you should not go. Right. There's a person in here that I've talked to a few times. And this person is having a battle mentally over making decisions on the fear of the unknown. And the reason is because it's a great move that they have to make. Because it's one, two made in the one. Along with family. But the person has to realize that if God calls you, He will qualify you first. Then He will send you. And there's no goodness that makes it happen. I've heard Rev say this dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Goodness has nothing to do with this gift. Because the gift and the calling is without a repentance. So therefore, you can't be good enough to earn a gift. It gives you a gift so that it can be used in your life and for other people. For an example, people that want the Holy Ghost bad enough, they will seek it until they get it. I was so hungry for it, I would not quit until I got it. I even sat down in a yard with two people from somewhere up north at this, I didn't know at the time it was an occult, but they were sitting there, and I was walking down the street, and they were sitting there, and they said, Are you a Christian? I said, Yeah, I just got born again not too long ago. I said, I'm getting ready to go to church and stuff. And he said, well, What are you doing? I said, I'm seeking somebody about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh. He said, You want that? I said, Yeah. So we sit down in the yard. What he says, he said, Say, Isha so I repeated that. He said, there you go, you got it. I said, no, I don't mind. And I got it left. <laughs> See, when you get the Holy Ghost, you'll feel it. It has a, it has a feeling. And it speaks for itself, by the way. Yeah, that's right. So I'm turning around, I'm going down the street. And somebody, I talked to somebody, and they said, uh, can I help you? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm trying to find this lady. Somebody told me there's a lady somewhere down in this area that... Uh, speaks in tongues. And he said, well, you're talking about Sister So-and-so. I said, I don't know what her name is. I said, she's supposed to be on this block. And I said, I, I forgot her name and everything. He said, go down there at that house right down there. And he, I think that's who you want to see. So I go up and I knock on the door. We got wax on the cross. We got a knock on the door. And this black lady standing way back in the kitchen. She said, can I help you? I said, yes, ma'am. I said, somebody told me that that you have the Holy Ghost if you speak in tongues. This is a total stranger. I'm out there looking for it. <laughs> You're supposed to ask God, but I'm looking for it. So she comes to the door and she invites me in. And it's, it's strange how this works because God wanted me to know that when you get this gift, there is no turning back. You hear what I'm saying? So this is what I'm going to say because it's important. So she said, come on in, honey. And I came in, we sat down. She said, well, why are you looking for this gift? I said, I don't know. I said, I just feel that I've got to have it. I said, I, I, I fast, I pray. I said, I seek God. I said, I ask people about it. People tell me you don't need it. People say it's, it's of the devil. I said, but something inside tells me I have to have it. She said, I'm going to give you a tape. It said tape. And it was her speaking in tongues and somebody interpreting the message. And when I heard it, I got this lit, I lit up because I felt it. I felt what she was saying. But then she came back and she said something that was very interesting. <clears throat> she said that they had a gospel group. They went around singing in churches. And they all made a vow and they all made a commitment that they were going to continue serving God 
And then they, what they were going to do is they were going to go from church to church and allow God to use their life because they gave it to them and they were going to go out and bless other people. Well, one got the big hit and thought he would go start his own group. Then the other one backslid and went into the bar. And then the other one did this. And then she began to tell me what happened to them, her as well. They all made the commitment together. What happened to them? One's in jail. This, this disease hit this and this and this. And it didn't register to me that what she was telling me, that you're after this gift. But when you get it, remember, there's no turning back. To it. Your salvation, there's no turning back. You might not understand that. Amen. God don't play games. If He calls you, He's going to qualify you. If He calls you, He's going to use you. Amen. But you have to wait on Him to use you. You can't use yourself. So anyway, I learned from that. I was so excited about that tape. I went and played it to every one of my friends. And it scared them to death. They said, what are they saying? I said, I don't know. I said, it sounds good. They looked at me funny. And the more I listened to that, the more the inspiration that I knew that I had to have that gift because there was something to it. I could feel the, the, the goosebumps on me when she was speaking. But I also could remember what she said about if you turn your back on God. If you turn from God after you once know Him, the Bible says there's no turning back. Nobody can get you back. Read Romans. It's in there. This year should be your year to seek God for all that God has for you. And if you allow God to do that for you, you will be totally surprised how powerful you can become as a prayer warrior. Just a prayer warrior. Knowing how to get a hold of the throne of God. You heard Ray's testimony last night. You remember what he said? There was a woman dying in the hospital. People standing there waiting for her to die. In a coma type state. And all this and stuff. And he said, I want to stay in the process. I could say, well, she's going to die and let it go. No. But we prayed. We as a group of believers in a body of Christ sent our prayers of faith into that hospital. And guess what? She's out of the bed. She's out of the corner. She's walking around. And she's recovering. Does that mean anything? Somebody broke through. Not just me. Somebody else. It could have been you and not me. That's why we prayed one for another. 